Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. Today I'd like to take you through part of the pyramid approach to selecting strain gauges. Tom Rummage in a previous video had gone through some of the planning stages of the test program, the specimen, surface preparation, and then selecting the adhesive. And today I'd like to take you through selecting the strain gauge, the type of things you need to think about when you're selecting a strain gauge for your project. So we're going to get started with how to select the strain gauge and basically what we're going to do is show you what the part number means. We'll go through each step of it, discuss what this number or letter means and then how you might use it or how you might apply it to your application. So the first slide really shows an entire part number for an EA series gauge. So uh, you would read the part number obviously from left to right. In this particular case it's an EA 13 uh, 250BG-120 and then the XX represents uh, any gauge options that you might have on the strain gauge. And we're basically as we start going through how to select the gauge we're going to start from left and work our way right. So that very first letter that E means something to us and what it means is that designates the uh, carrier for the strain gauge. That carrier really serves two purposes. It provides an electrical insulation for the gauge so that the metallic foil doesn't short to the surface and it also basically provides mechanical stability for the foil so that you can handle it and get it installed. And if we look at different types of backings or, or carriers uh, there are several to choose from. And as we look at this slide, if we work from left to right, you'll see the first one is an E, which is our uh, part number that we just looked at, and the E represents a cast polyimid backing. It's one of the oldest backings that are used for gauges. When you think about using a strain gauge with an E backing, uh, you'll find that the, the E, if you're trying to se select a gauge backing, you'll find that the E is going to be very flexible. So if you're installing a strain gauge on a curved surface, maybe you're putting it on a small diameter shaft or down the side of a fillet, an E-series gauge would probably be a good one to choose. Uh, or if you're testing to very high strain levels, and by high strain levels I mean strain levels above about 5% strain. So let's say you're going to 10% and with certain combinations you can go as high as 20% strain, you'll find that the E-backing would be the one that you would choose for that. Uh, the other nice thing about e-backings is that they are available with a wide variety of different types of options. So if you found a gauge with the e-backing and you wanted to add lead wires to it to make the installation a little bit easier, you could do that. Now the next one is the CE backing and that is the one that's the most common that's used for experimental testing. And the difference here between the E and the CE is that the CE has the same initial backing or carrier but it also has an encapsulating film over the top of the strain gauge and it also has large copper coated uh, tabs to make the soldering uh, much much easier. Uh, we find these are widely used in industry for general purpose uh, stress analysis testing. Uh, they are available in a wide variety of different sizes all the way down to a 0 .015 inch gauge length and in the the CE construction you can get gauges up to a 0.5 inch or half of an inch uh, active gauge length. Uh, all the geometries, uh, uniaxial, T rosettes, shear patterns, rectangular rosettes, and even a delta rosette are available in a CE construction. So again, widely used general purpose testing. Um, if, you, if you find that you start to go to some um, elevated temperatures that are maybe beyond what a CE could handle, then you might start looking at two of the other ones on this slide, which are the W uh, and the S. The W is one of our highest performance backings. That one is a glass uh, impregnated uh, epoxy phenolic uh, material. Uh, the glass helps to control the expansion and contraction of the backing, and one of the things that does is help to give it a very, very wide um, operating temperature range. Um, you'll find from a fatigue life the uh, W backing is one of the best combinations or, or best backing materials we have. Uh, 
for uh, a very long fatigue life. When you combine it with the right type of foil, whether it's a karma foil or an isoelastic alloy, uh, that gives you about the best fatigue life you can get out of a bonded uh, strain gauge. Uh, it, you'll notice in the image it has some beryllium copper lead ribbons on it. The beryllium copper lead ribbons uh, also help to enhance the fatigue life of the strain gauge. And then the S one, the S is also the same material. It's a glass reinforced epoxy phenolic, virtually the same as the W, but the difference is that it has solder dots as opposed to these beryllium copper lead ribbons. Uh, some customers like the lead ribbons, some customers like the solder dots. It's just a somewhat of a personal preference. Uh, depending on what you've gotten accustomed to, you will find that the W backing can go a little higher in temperature. Uh, the S backing is going to be derated some because we use a 570 solder dot and that will set the upper temperature limit of these gauges. I think conservatively we rate them at about 500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit.